Hey, what's up? Welcome to uh, Harris's Corner. <laughs> I hate that. I uh, hope that doesn't stick. Anyway, so you click this video because it's a comprehensive tutorial, step-by-step -step of how to set up your audio using the new Beacon Mix and Beacon Mix Create mixers from Beacon. That was redundant. We did a similar video three years ago when the Go XLR first came out and I still get a ton of tweets about how helpful that has been. And since I genuinely believe that these devices are the next generation of Go XLR, I think these will be the same staple audio devices, same way the Go XLR has been for the last three years. I wanted to put this tutorial out there for anyone who's confused by maybe some of the more advanced features and just wants to get this all set up and working. So let's just jump right into it. Let's not waste any more time except telling you about today's sponsor, which is not a sponsor because the sponsor is me and I'm gonna tell you about Streambeat, which is the best copyright free music you can have for your live streams. It's completely free. It's on all live streaming platforms. We have like 15-ish genres. I don't even know because we have so many. Over 1600 tracks right there on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, uh, or even just to download right from streambeats.com if you wanna use it in your local library or put it in your YouTube videos. You're totally free to put it in your YouTube content as well. So go check it out, give it a listen. I'll put links to it in the description down below. All right, let me get screen recording going. Let me get this camera going and let's get this started. Side cam is recording while I set up OBS. Let me also just remind you, uh, hit the like button. Helps out a ton. This is gonna be hopefully a very helpful tutorial. And if you want more people to see it and you wanna help me out, it's great and it's free. And if you don't, you're a terrible person. Just kidding, maybe. And we're gonna start with the Beacon Mix, and not the Beacon Mix Create, because this tutorial will literally take one minute. So let's run over it real quick. This is their simple version. The purpose of this device was to create a very simple and easy to use audio workspace. Not so much meant to be like a, a lesser Beacon Mix Create, but just meant to be one for all the people that didn't want the crazy submixes and routing table and, and mute modes and stuff. So this is the Beacon Mix software. It's very simple. On the left side, we have all of our profiles. If you wanna have different profiles for different games. In the middle, we'll have all of our devices. So if we plug in a microphone, that'll show up here. Right here, you can see this is the Beacon Mix. It looks just like the Beacon Mix. And our two options underneath it, the mixer, which is what we're looking at here, and the settings right here, which honestly, you don't even really have to touch. So let's run over the mixer real quick because this is gonna be our intro into the more complicated Mix Create. You have your four faders which correspond to the four knobs. You can see as I turn up and down one of the knobs, it turns up and down one of the faders. And down here, we have all of our audio sources. We have our inputs, our outputs, our applications, and then other sources, which right now is just our personal listening device, which we'll get into. So let's try to just make this as simple as possible. Let's put our microphone, which is our built-in microphone on this laptop right now, on the left one. Now, this controls the volume of our microphone. And if I click it, it mutes the microphone. I just launched Discord and jumped into voice chat. And so you can see Discord appears in applications. I'm gonna drag that here for chat. And just for fun, I'm gonna double click on that and I'm gonna change it to voice chat. And blue actually works out really nicely. And now I can change the volume of my voice chat. Let's turn on some 100 Thieves hype tracks. And you can see Spotify is gonna appear right here. Let's turn that up to here. Let's make this one music. And let's change the color because it's Spotify by double clicking on that little line there. Let's change it to, uh, let's change it to green. Now I can change the volume of my music. And just for fun, we're gonna turn personal listening device to the last one. And that's just gonna control my personal volume, which is what these two devices are. But that's the entire mixer. Beacon tried to make this as easy and plug and play to use so anybody can understand how to use it. The only other thing I need to explain is what both of these two listening devices are. And basically there are two because it allows you to switch back and forth between two listening devices. So for example, if I grab headphones and plug them in here, first of all, you may have noticed that another microphone actually popped in here, but also I have headphone audio, which I'll make my first audio listening device. And then I can make the second one my speakers and by holding one of the buttons, any of the four buttons on here, I switch back and forth. And so I can easily switch between headphones and speakers. I actually do that in my stream room, switching between my headphones and my giant speakers. So it's really nice, really convenient. I'm, I'm really glad they did something like that. I haven't seen anyone do that before. Two different outputs that you can switch back and forth between. And you can also see, by the way, the two different outputs have independent volumes. So that way you don't accidentally blast things through your speakers when you switch over to them. And then I can control the active listening device with that right knob, because that's what I set it to. You can also rename the device itself. 
itself. Call this one output, call this one mic. So you can not only change the name of the channel itself, but you can change the name of the source, which sounds redundant, but the reason it helps is you can put multiple sources inside a single fader if you want to control them both with the same knob. This way, if you truly want to make voice chat a like communicative volume knob, you can also grab Skype or whatever, because you know, we all use Skype and throw it into voice chat. And now I control both volumes with the same knob. But that's it for the Beacon Mix. Let's move on to the Beacon Mix Create because there's a lot more to cover in here. And if you are uh, at all inclined to tweak, tweak tech, tweak, tweak your tech. By the way, it comes with whatever color cable, a matching cable to your color device. But I'm not gonna go get the black one. By the way, quick table of contents for the Mix Create stuff. The majority of this video is gonna be an overview of just how all the features, how this works, how you set it up. And then at the end, we're gonna say how to use it in a two PC setup and how to use it with another device similar to it, just like a Go XLR or a Wave XLR, for example, if you already have one of those. How do you set that up? So you can see when I unplug the Beacon Mix, the device disappears. And now the Beacon Mix Create with a new icon appears right in the middle there. So you can see right off the bat here, we're looking at something a little bit more complicated. Not terribly complicated, but more complicated. But this looks different. We've added an audience mix and we have a routing table instead. So let's go over all this. The first thing you're gonna wanna do to set all this up is make sure you set your playback devices properly. This is gonna work similar to how the Go XLR works. You're gonna right click on the speaker down here. You're gonna hit sounds and you're gonna set your playback and recording devices. And you can see that the Beacon Mix Create has made a bunch of these little virtual devices for you to change your input and output to. For our playback, we're gonna change system to be our default device. So that way any game or any music by default comes through the system. And then we're gonna change the chat to be our default communications device. That way any communications app like Discord or Skype or whatever will come by default through the chat channel. Then we're gonna go over to recording and we're gonna find voice chat mic and we're gonna make that both the default device and the default communication device. If you don't do this, there's a chance that if you call someone through Discord or Zoom or whatever, they're gonna hear all of your desktop audio also and not just your microphone. All right, cool, that's it for the settings. Let's jump into the app and the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna set up our outputs. So just like the Beacon Mix, we're gonna set up our personal mix to be our headphones and our speakers, and just like the Beacon Mix, if I hold any of the four buttons, it switches back and forth between them. But now we have a new one over here called Audience Mix. And the reason we have that is because we have two completely separate mixes, one for what we hear and one for what the audience hears. And we're actually able to output that wherever we want. So if we wanna output it to a different app, like Voice Meter, for example, we can do that, or we can just keep it its own output called Audience Mix, and we can just throw that right into OBS. So let's throw it in OBS real quick. We're gonna go to our audio settings, and under Mic Auxiliary, we're gonna make this audience mix. And now everything that we do inside, inside this app, everything that comes through it is going to go to our audience mix right here, just like the Go XLR. So we have all of our output set now. Let's take a look at the mixer. So this is where you're going to control all the things. So you have your microphone, you have your chat, you have your music, you have your system. If we want to do even more, we can hit the plus button. Maybe we want a specific channel to control the game volume or our browser volume or even other hardware inputs. Let's go ahead and add game in there real quick. So for example, if I plug in this USB microphone here, I can add another hardware input. I'm gonna move this one using those dots at the top over next to the other mic. And here's the Razer Siren right there. And now I have two microphones going into this right now. So Scott, if you switch to the audience mix in OBS, you can actually hear both microphones. Let's go ahead and delete this one for now. Just, just for good measure. You can see how I did that by clicking the little down arrow at the top and hitting delete. But you can see that each of these channels here on the mixer has two faders now. One is for what you hear, one is for what your audience hears. So for example, if you turn down this one right here under music, you're gonna hear the music really quietly, but your audience is gonna hear it really loud. It's fairly straightforward, pretty simple. A little important detail here that confuses a lot of people. By default, microphones are muted in your own headphones. And the reason for that is if you send your microphone signal over to your PC and then back to your headphones, you're gonna get latency or like a delay. And it's really annoying. <laughs> but if you are someone like me who likes to hear your microphone in your own headphones, most USB microphones have a headphone jack or if you're using an XLR microphone, usually the XLR interface has a headphone jack, like for example, 
the Go XLR does right there. That allows your microphone signal to be sent directly from the microphone back to your headphones before ever being converted to digital, which removes that delay and it's pretty much instantaneous. So that's why in the software on the computer, the headphones are always muted on your microphone. But the first thing we need to do is assign our apps to the proper channels. So there's a little button up here in the top right. If we click on it, it takes us to the sound settings where we can choose what each app's input and outputs are. So if I play, this phenomenal stream beat song, which by the way, is actually really good. You can see by default, because I haven't assigned the track, it's just showing up in the first one in chat here. So if I click that button and I go in here and I change the output to music, now it's moved to the music channel. And you can assign any app to any fader this exact same way. Once you have all your channels assigned, you can move them around however you want them to be ordered. Super important to know that this is a little janky at the moment. You do have to place it right between the two channels that you want it to go. So. Be patient with it if it's not moving. I've been told they're working on that. Let's see how long it takes them. If you create more than four channels, which is the maximum that you can see and control on the device itself, you can see the arrows light up and you can use that to scroll to the left and the right to see all your channels. So if I were to have six channels here and I hit the right button, it shows the far right six channels and we lose the first two on the app. So if we were to have six channels on here and I hit the right arrow button, it's gonna shift everything over two channels and now the left two channels aren't being shown. We just hit the left arrow and it's gonna go back to it. But if you have a channel that you always want to be showing on your screen, they added a little lock button up at the top. And when you lock the faders, now as I shift, only the right three channels are actually scrolling when I hit the arrow button. You'll also notice each of these channels have a little link button down at the bottom. And when they're linked and we move a fader, it moves them both together. If we wanna change either the personal mix or the audience mix separately, we just unlink them, adjust it properly, and link them back together. And now as we adjust it on the screen, they move together. Also, if we adjust it on the knob, they move together. And if you ever wanna to listen to your audience mix and make sure you have levels set properly, you're not turning up the music too loud for your viewers, you hit this little button on the very bottom right underneath the arrows and it switches what you're hearing. Right now we're hearing the audience mix. Right now we're hearing our mix again. I've actually given Beacon a suggestion on this because personally the only time I'm gonna switch over to my audience mix is if I'm trying to hear and make sure that all of their levels are perfect. And so what I would like is if I jump over to the audience mix, it automatically unlocks all of them so that I can adjust the audience mix of a particular channel, then go back to mine and relock it. But that's just what I think. I'd love to know if you agree with me on that feature suggestion. If you don't agree with me or do, please leave it in the comments down below because that adds engagement to the video, which adds more viewers. So if you don't have an opinion on what I just said, please just leave an emoji. Two last things on the mixer area up here. Just like the Beacon Mix, you can change the color of any track just by double clicking it and moving it. And you can see it also changes the color on the screen and the color on the button. I actually really like setting my mics to white. I think it looks good. And then you have your mute modes down here. So by default, they're set to when you hit the button, it mutes that input to everything. But for example, if you wanna set your microphone to only mute to your teammates or to your voice chat, you can check that. That way, say you're playing a battle royale, you die, your other teammates are still alive, you mute yourself to the chat and your audience, your viewers can still hear you. You can have a conversation with them without bothering your teammates. I've also been told that they're adding in a feature very soon, similar to the Beacon Mix, where if you click the knob, just a short click, it'll mute to all your sources. That way you can have your own mute mode here, however you set it, and then a mute to all on the knob. Kind of nice. Last thing to talk about is the routing table down here, which is also really cool because it's a dynamic routing table. Meaning if we add or get rid of a channel, you can see it removes itself from over here. So what a routing table does is it's where you decide which inputs go to which outputs. For example, if I want my teammates to be able to hear my music, I can click this one. If I don't want them to, I uncheck it. Maybe I'm playing a YouTube video in a Discord call and I want my audience to be able to hear YouTube. I would check this right here and that's gonna send my system audio, which is where Chrome gets sent to, out to my voice chat. All right, let's jump into a two PC setup. This is actually super simple. You're going to need four things for this. You're gonna need two aux cables or an eighth inch male to male headphone jack and then you're gonna need two <laughs> Shoot, what are they called? Ground loop noise isolators. That's what it is. You can get all four of these things total for like 20 to 30 bucks. You don't need super high quality stuff. Some of you won't actually need the ground loop noise isolators depending on how your PCs are powered, but most of you will. 
So it's not a bad idea just to pick up two of them. All you really have to do here, by the way, is connect your line outs on each PC to the line ends of the other PC. So for example, take your aux cable, plug it into the line out of your gaming PC. Plug that into the ground loop noise isolator and then plug that into the line in of your streaming PC. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to take everything happening on your gaming PC and send it over to your streaming PC. Generally, I recommend you set this up on your gaming PC. And then what you do in the software is you go to audience mix down here, you're gonna click the drop down menu and you're going to find line out in here. This laptop doesn't have a line out, which is why it's not showing here, but if you have a desktop PC, that'll show up in here. You might have to plug in the cable before it shows up. Just a heads up. Then over on OBS on your streaming PC, the same way that we added audience mix to our gaming PC when it was a one PC setup, you're gonna add line in as your audio input, your mic slash auxiliary in the audio settings. That's gonna take everything you're doing on your mix here and send it over to your streaming PC. For those of you that do want to set this up on your streaming PC, because I know there are a couple of you they actually put something in here to make it a little bit easier. You're still gonna keep this as audience mix and in OBS, you're gonna add audience mix as your mic slash auxiliary input. And generally, if you're plugged into your streaming PC, I assume it means you have Discord on your streaming PC and you have your microphone plugged into your streaming PC and you'll want your headphones also plugged into your streaming PC. And on your gaming PC, you'll set your output to be your line out into your streaming PC. So that way everything's being sent over here. You'll add another input over here. You'll make it hardware and you're gonna make that your line in. That way your game and everything happening on that PC will be sent over to your streaming PC and you can control it with a fader. How many times are you gonna interrupt, dude? Can you just let me do my job? You just bored? You're probably bored. We're almost done here. At this point, there's another thing you're going to need to do in case you want to send your voice over to like in-game chat, for example, if you want to talk inside a, an in-game voice chat. Because the reason we got two aux cables and two ground loop noise isolators is because you're going to need to do the reverse of what we did earlier. You're going to need to go out of the line out of your streaming PC into the line in of your gaming PC. Going from aux cable to ground loop noise isolator into the line in. And what they've added here is really cool. They've given your voice chat mix an extra output. You can click this down arrow. You can copy your chat mic output to go out of the line out of your streaming PC and into the line in and then capture it inside in game voice on your gaming PC. These guys really did think of just about everything, but that is a two PC setup. It's not all that much different than a single PC setup. You're just changing your output and then connecting the two PCs via line outs and line ins. But what about using it with a Go XLR? I've gotten people asking that question a ton. And let me tell you, first off, Utilizing both softwares is going to be incredibly complicated. You're gonna have multiple outputs, multiple inputs that aren't really fully speaking with each other, which will just really give you a ton of redundancy and it's not really going to expand upon your capabilities. However, I have a feeling that there's gonna be some audio geeks who figure out some really cool stuff that you can do with both and I look forward to seeing that. But for the most part, if you have an XLR microphone and you have a Go XLR and you don't wanna trade that out, you wanna continue using that microphone but you want all the features of the Beacon Mix Create, all you have to do is have them both plugged in and you can see once they're plugged in, you now have access to all the Go XLR outputs. You have your sample output, your chat mic output, your broadcast stream mix. Those are all in there. So if you're plugging your mic in through here, you just click chat mic and now that's your microphone in the first one. The Beacon Mix grabs that input and puts it into its own mixer so you can control it with this device. The first thing that I can see people toying with and finding some real functionality with using both of these is the fact that this thing has multiple outputs. So for example, you can output the chat mic, you can output the broadcast stream mix, and you can output the line out on this. That's three different outputs. And you can capture all three of those in here with three different hardware or aux inputs. I could send stuff through here, route it however I want, and then send different mixes of the Go XLR into different inputs. Haven't quite figured out why that would be useful yet, but I feel like there's a reason for it, you know? Maybe one day I'll toy around on my two PC setup and we'll have some fun and we'll figure it out, all right? Deal? Subscribe so I can tell you when I figure it out <laughs> or you figure it out and you tell me or hit the like button because I haven't asked you to do that yet. Please do that. That would be great. Helps out the video a ton. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't seen the video on this, 
I'll link to it down below and in the corner up here. Uh, next week, we'll be posting a tutorial on the Beacon mic, which was, oh, it's not here. No, that's at my stream setup in the other room. So make sure you subscribe for the Beacon mic tutorial because there's a ton to talk about in there. I just found a brand new feature yesterday, which is really exciting. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging out. And as always, happy streaming.